Right ventricular function influences the prognosis in many disease processes, and the decision to operate is often determined by right ventricular function. So it's important to accurately image the right ventricle to assess right ventricular function. Interestingly, 3D echo is not widely used for determining right ventricular function, as it's only used in around 1% of cases currently. Why isn't 3D imaging commonly used for the right ventricle? The right ventricle is the most anterior structure of the heart. This creates difficulties in 3D transosophageal echo, with suboptimal image quality in most people because the right ventricle is simply far from the probe. So why should 3D imaging be used for the right ventricle? When compared to the left ventricle, the right ventricle has a more complex shape. The right ventricle has a crescent shape and it wraps around the left ventricle, so it's difficult to image. The right ventricle also has three different well-defined regions, the inflow, the outflow, and the apical region. Using 2D echo, these regions cannot be seen at the same time, but they can be seen adequately using 3D echo. Let's look at the right ventricular views, which highlight the limitations of 2D echo. Using 2D echo only, you'll find it difficult to understand the right ventricle's true dimensions and shape, as your standard ultrasound beam may be crossing the ventricle at any point or axis. In 2D echo, we can assess the right ventricle in three apical views. The right ventricle modified apical four chamber view is acquired by moving the probe from the apex of the left ventricle medially, but this view isn't accurate for measuring right ventricle dimensions. The right ventricle diameter measures 2.97 centimeters. This is a falsely small right ventricle diameter measurement. There is also the option of the conventional full chamber view, where you focus on the left ventricle, maximize the left ventricular diameter, and acquire the image. In this view, the right ventricle diameter measures 3.18 centimeters, but this does not dissect the right ventricle at its maximum diameter. If you want to image the most accurate diameter of the right ventricle, you should do a right ventricular focused view where you get the full chamber view and slowly rotate the probe to obtain the maximal right ventricle diameter. The right ventricle diameter measures 3.27 centimeters. If you look at the diameter acquired by each view, the measurement of the linear dimensions vary. The most accurate measure of the right ventricle diameter is acquired from the right ventricular focus for chamber view. The good news is that 3D imaging helps us get accurate measurements. With 3D echo, you are acquiring images that include the whole ventricle, instead of only 2D slices. You get a whole pyramid of data, which encompasses both the left and right ventricles. Stitch artifacts are avoided, and the patient can breathe freely, as they are not required to hold their breath for long periods of time. Note that all the steps of 3D reconstruction, orientation, and segmentation used to be done manually. However, with modern software, the calculations are automated with minimal input from the operator. With 3D echo, you can easily determine right ventricular function. First, let's review how 2D echo is used to determine right ventricular function. Using M mode, you can assess how far the tricuspid annulus moves towards the apex during systole, an indication of right ventricular systolic function. On the electrocardiogram, this undulating pattern more or less matches the onset of the QRS complex and peak of the T waves. This measure is called TAPSI, tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion, and it should be equal to or greater than 17 millimeters. Anything lower than this suggests there is impairment in the right ventricle systolic function. The fractional area change is also used in 2D echo. It's a measure that provides an estimate of the global right ventricular systolic function. 
it calculates the percentage of area change within the right ventricle between diastole and systole. Normally, the fractional area change should be above 35%. Let's compare these methods to 3D echo. In this image, you see the right ventricle in the short axis and four chamber views. The echocardiography machine automatically determines the endocardial border. Then the 3D volume casts are generated. Here we see that the end diastolic volume is 87.5 milliliters and the end systolic volume is 48.2 milliliters, giving us a normal right ventricular ejection fraction of 55%. The right ventricle ejection fraction measured by 3D echo is more accurate for determining right ventricular function compared to tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion and fractional area change. The advantages of using 3D echo instead of 2D to calculate the right ventricular ejection fraction are Firstly, geometric assumptions aren't needed. Secondly, it includes the right ventricular outflow tract contributions to the overall function. And finally, it correlates well with the right ventricular ejection fraction measurements from cardiac MRI, so we know the measurements are accurate. In summary, 3D echo is a helpful tool to accurately assess right ventricular volume and function. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.